the message to this team has been this is a business trip. Yeah, you you know, a little sightseeing, a little fun, but this is a business trip. This is about getting after it and playing basketball and learning about yourselves. And that's what the Rebels are about to do as they take the floor in their uh, red practice jerseys. They'll be on the floor. It'll be uh, Elijah Parquet, David Mawoka, Justin Webster, Luis Rodriguez, and Keyshawn Gilbert. And uh, we just got the Fraser Valley roster, so I apologize. The names are going to be a little bit uh, slow to come. Courtney Anderson, uh, Chris Jackson, who is a Las Vegas product from Mojave High School. Okay. Chris Jackson playing here for the Cascades. Uh, Dylan Kinney is out. Kinley is out there, along with Dario Lopez. And jumping center is Matthias Klim. Matthias Klim, 6'11", against Mooka. We're ready to play basketball. All right. Or just about ready. The official uh, He's getting dribbles in. in. There you go. All right, Mooka wins the tip. It goes off Rodriguez's fingers. Keyshawn goes to get it, able to save it. And moving from our left to right, Keyshawn Gilbert into the front court. Gives the ball left side to Parquet. Rodriguez, who's been very good on this trip. Over to Webster, down low to Parquet. Parquet in the lane. Parquet kicks the ball out to Rodriguez for a three. Luis's three is good, and that's the way this one starts. And that's a, that's a great offensive possession there for the Rebels to start. You throw it inside to Eli Parquet, allow him to kind of play out of the post. Uh, we'll find Luis from the left corner. Kinley drives right side, throws the ball, tries to throw a pass in the corner, and Justin Webster steps inside just as like he's coached and steals it. Mooka, left side to Parquet. A three for Eli off the back iron, no good. And heading the other way is Courtney Anderson. Quick pass up ahead to Lopez. Lopez spins in the lane. There's a bounce pass that is stolen by Parquet. Parquet left side to Webster. Webster drives, lost the ball going up. It went off his leg, and the Rebels turn it over. And even though Justin turns it over right there, the one thing I've been impressed with with, with Justin Webster so far on this trip is that he's not just settling for shots. And if he gets the ball in transition, he's looking to attack and try to get to the basket to force some action. He's also played outstanding defense yeah. in, the, in the second game especially. Now a nice shot, Courtney Anderson. From the elbow, cutting past a Rebel. Nails a 14-footer. 3-2 UNLV early on in the first quarter. Remember, FIBA rules as Keyshawn Gilbert out top to Mooka. Right side, Parquet comes middle of the floor. Parquet down the lane. Parquet lost the ball, and uh, it goes to Fraser Valley. Courtney Anderson into the front court. Stops, shoots from the same spot he just did, and traveled. Anderson shuffled his feet to get open, and he turns it over. A little bit of a rocky start in it's a very small gym, probably the smallest gym the Rebels have played in in quite a while. It's cozy, Keep though. Cozy. And it's a cozy gym. A lot of folks came out to check it out. They did. I mean, it's Friday night right here in the Fraser Valley. I don't know Absolutely. what else there is to do. I'm sure there's a lot. Well, there's something whatever to you're going to do, you can do it outside because it's beautiful. It's, yeah, it's amazing weather. Parquet, a three from the right side. That's too long. Mooka rebounds, gives it out to Webster. Catch and shoot three for Justin is good. Rebels have hit two threes on four attempts, and they lead six to two. Best time to shoot three-pointers off an offensive rebound. Nobody is set. Great kick out there by David Mooka to find Justin. In the front court, Jack Chris Jackson to Anderson, left side to Lopez. Lopez down the left side. Lopez steps through, then throws a pass, and a they're going to call a block as he tried to throw a pass in the corner to Kinley. Parquet tried to draw a charge, but called for the block. 6-2 Rebels, 7.53 to go in the first, first quarter. And it will be the Cascades, ball out of bounds. Cascades in the home white uniforms, trimmed in the evergreen color. Ooh, that's, that's it is. Yeah, okay. Well, it's very green outside, too. It is. Uh-huh. And it will be Kinley to inbound baseline left side. Kinley looking for Jackson cutting. Instead gets it uh, to Lopez or uh, to Klim cutting for the basket, and he dunks it. Rebels, uh, the focus may be a little bit off right now just because of the, the circumstances under which we arrived. But And Keyshawn Gilbert gets fouled driving to the basket. We got here, and this place was completely empty, and the Rebels just kind of looking around saying, what's going on? It uh, took a while to kind of get things going. They lead 6-4. to four. Inbounds pass to Webster. A three from the right side for Justin. He's good. He's hit two. And the Rebels lead 9-4. to four, All nine points coming on three. And Justin's going to get a lot of those opportunities, not just now, but once we get into the season as well. A lot of t time and opportunity to be able to line up and knock down some threes. Chris Jackson. The Mojave High School product had the ball knocked away by Webster, but it uh, couldn't be saved. Keyshawn Gilbert on the line trying to save it. So it was 7.26 to go. Rebels up 9-4. to four. Kinley to Klim. Back to Kinley. who brings the ball out top. Watched by Mooka. Kinley's going to drive, stop, 
spin back, throw the ball left side to Jackson, and Justin Webster deflects it out of bounds. Six on the shot clock. I think they're going to add the get it back to 14, which is the FIBA rule. 7-18 to go, first quarter, 9-4, Rebels with the lead. Kinley bounces the ball out to Anderson, little guard. Working out top comes left side. Anderson has the ball knocked away. Jackson picks it up, throws a desperation shot up, taken out of the air by Luis Rodriguez, who heads up the floor. Luis down the right side, flips the ball to Parquet. Parquet goes baseline back to Rodriguez. Rodriguez, a three from the right side, is Mm. good. Rodriguez and Webster each with two threes. Rebels lead 12-4 in a timeout called by Fraser Valley. So the Rebels off to a good start, leading 12-4. They've hit four threes on six tries in this game. We'll step aside for a 60-second timeout. You're listening to Run and Rebel Basketball on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Along with Curtis Terry here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, against uh, the Rebels playing against mm-hmm. Fraser Valley and Jackie Johnson in the game. Gets called for a foul, trying to trap Kinley in the front court. Rebels lead 12-4, 6.52 to go in the first quarter. Johnson and... Uh, Big key, Keyshawn Hall, the freshman. Major key. Major key. Are we going major or big? I like the, I like the DJ Khaled right. reference. All right, major key. Major key alert. Major key. Meanwhile, minor key guarding the inbounds pass. Almost stole it. Chris Anderson with the ball out top. Now watched by Keyshawn Hall. Anderson on the right side. Lopez trying to post up. Ball out top to Chris Jackson. Jackson from Mojave High School into the lane. Puts it off the glass and in. Nice move. And it's 12-6, to six, Rebels. Keyshawn Gilbert brings up. Keyshawn Gilbert playing a lot of point Mm -hmm. in these three games. And I think that's what we're going to see a lot of him going to be able to do on the floor. Obviously, you're going to have Jackie Johnson. You're going to have Jordan McCabe. I think it's a situation where EJ Harkless, Keyshawn Gilbert and EJ Harkless are all going to have a chance to to be able to make plays for their teammates. Keyshawn Hall drives down the left side, kicks it to Rodriguez, thinks about the three. Now he drives, kicks it out to Webster. Webster, a three, no good. Justin missed that one, had a good look, and Jackson heads the other way. Jackson dribbling. Stops at the three-point line, shoots a three from the right side, and hits it. And Chris Jackson with five straight points, cuts the lead to 12-9. to You know he's fired up playing against his hometown team. Luis Rodriguez catches and drives, lays it in. Luis now with uh, eight points, 14-9 to Rebels. Lopez on the right side. Lopez drives right side. Lopez gets banged by Keyshawn Hall. No call. Reverse layup, no good. Luis Rodriguez with the rebound. Lost the ball, gets it back, kicks it to Jackie. Johnson cross-court pass to Webster, a three from the right corner. Back iron, no good. Rodriguez hustling, almost stole the rebound. Instead, Kinley takes it away. Kinley up ahead to Lopez. Lopez left side. Lopez on the left wing. Cross-court pass out to Clem. Clem feeds Jackson. Jackson back to Kinley. 5.15 to go. Rebels lead 14-9. Kinley steps back and launches a high arcing three, and he hits it. So 14-12 as the Rebels kind of let him back in the game a little bit. With five minutes to go here in the first quarter. Justin Webster out top to Rodriguez. Luis, a three's an air ball. A little tired. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Luis saying Tap he wants that to jersey, come out. Pull it. Hey, coach, I need one. As he and Keyshawn Gilbert take a seat, Jordan McCabe and Shane Noel check in. I think he's going to get a sub there regardless if he called for one or not. Yes, after I, that think shot. <laughs> I think you're right. 14-12, to 12, Rebels with just a two-point lead. After getting off to a hot start, and again, I we, think one. Uh, go ahead. I was going to say again, we got Keyshawn Hall out here playing the five spot for this team. I yeah. think we're going to see a lot of that on the course of the season, where you're going to kind of go small, put Keyshawn as your big, depending on you know, any foul trouble or, or lineups. The situation where they're all interchangeable, they can really wreak some havoc on, on the defensive end. Anderson all the way down the lane missed the little floater, and the rebound tip taken by Shea Noel. Pass up ahead, Justin Webster. Webster bounce pass down low to Jackie Johnson. A little pump fake and a layup. Nice move by Jackie and a great couple of passes to execute that fast break. 16 to 12 Rebels, four and a half to go. Jackson front court, watched by McCabe. Jackson on the right side, brings the ball back out top to Anderson. Anderson, little guard left side. Kinley with the high arcing three a moment ago. Skip pass over to Jackson. Jackson working on McCabe, steps inside. A floater from the baseline, back iron no good. Noel with the rebound. Shane heads up the floor. Shane into the front court, comes left side. Shane gets... uh, Stripped by Clem, and the ball goes out of bounds. And with 4.09 to go, Rebels will have it out of bounds. Baseline left side, leading 16-12. to 12. Into the game for the first time for the Cascades. Ui Alogola. Ui. 
Ball comes in to Noel. He takes a jump shot from the wing, about 14 feet, and he missed it. And the Cascades head the other way. Kinley, on top left side, picks up the dribble, flips it out top to Jackson, right side Anderson. Anderson. Cross court to Lopez. Lopez into the lane. Lopez runs right over Keyshawn Hall and a charge called on Lopez. That's, that's, the, let's say, that's the first charge the Rebels have taken, but that's the fourth one that they've tried to take. Yes. And, again, we talked about this on Wednesday. They've got multiple guys that are willing to step up and stand in the lane and take that contact because most of the time you've got maybe two tops, three guys that will do it. I think we've got a course of seven of the guys on the team as of now that have been willing to step up and try to take that. And you know it's something they talked to Keyshawn Hall about because the other day he was in a position to take a charge and he stepped out of the way. This oh, yeah. time he said, okay, I'm going to do it. Hall with the ball out top. Rebels lead 16-12, to 3.35 to go in the first quarter. Hall down the left side. Hall throws a pass underneath to Mawoka, and David throws in the backcourt. David should have just gone up with it. Instead, he tried to throw a no-look pass out to Jordan McCabe. And you know just Kevin Kruger and the coaching staff said to the guys, you have to be able to focus regardless of the environment, regardless yeah. of the circumstance. The guys have been a little loose, and I'm sure – and that's going to be the case regardless of where you're playing. If you're playing in the pit, if you're playing at San Diego State, I mean, heck, if you're playing at San Jose State, it's, yeah. it's going to maybe resemble this type of atmosphere every once in a while. Um, Chris, uh, Courtney Anderson shoots a three as Elijah Parquet, Parquet just watched him, and he knocks it down, and it's 16-15, to 15 Rebels. Noel with the ball. Noel in the lane, forces a 14-foot jumper. He made it. Good athletic move there, 18-15, to 15 Rebels, 3.05 to go. In the front court, Alogala into the lane, kicks the ball in the corner to Lopez. He shoots a three, and he hits it. Boy, this team can really shoot, and we're tied at 18. In the front court, Jordan McCabe. McCabe comes to the elbow on the right side, now brings it back out. There's a lob to Mawoka, and Mawoka is fouled by Lopez, pushing him out of the way as David went up for that pass. Klim will check in and Lopez will go back to the bench. Tied at 18 after the Rebels got off to the hot start. The outstanding three-point shooting of the Cascades keeping them in the game. Ball into Parquet. Parquet catches right side. Drives. Comes inside and his shot is blocked by Klim. Out of bounds to the Rebels. Elijah got up in the air tried to double clutch and that gave Klim plenty of opportunity to get over and swat the ball away. 2.35 to go, tied at 18 in the first quarter. Catch and shoot three off balance by Parquet. No oh good. Gosh. Noel storms in for the rebound, feeds Mawoka, and David lays it in. What an athletic play by Shane Noel. Just shows the flashes of athleticism of what he can do on the floor. Obviously got a rebound, got it out, transition one time, pulled up jump shot, now getting a huge offensive rebound. Anderson shoots and misses. Rebels lead 20 to 18. Rebound to McCabe. Jordan in the front court. Middle of the floor, now down the left side. Jordan curls it back out. Throws the ball to Noel. Fakes the three. Cross court to Keyshawn Hall. Hall down the right side. Hall goes behind oh, the back. Great move to get boy. free. Woo! Lays it in with the right hand. Crossed his opponent over and just lost him. 22-18. Big guard, major key, Hall with the big basket there. 22-18. Kinley open for a three, and he hits it. 22-21. This is a little reminiscent of the game against yeah, UBC where the Rebels just did not do a good job. Getting to shooters. Getting to shooters. A minute 35 to go. Rebels by one. McCabe. Nice pass to David yeah. Mawoka for the slam dunk. Jordan came to the foul line, thought about shooting. David was rolling on the pick and roll, and he hit him, and it's 24-21. And as we've gotten through the course of these three games, we've seen more and more of the guys playing out of the pick and roll, getting more familiar with what they're going to be doing, and that's going to be a huge play for the Rebels in terms of the pick and roll with David getting to the rim. Jackson tries to drive. He gets stripped. I don't know if it was McCabe or Noel, but the Rebels come away with it. Minute five to go with the ball, leading 24-21. McCabe to Keyshawn Hall. Keyshawn gets a pick from Mawoka, comes to the elbow, throws a pass to McCabe in the left corner. He shoots a three. That's short. And the rebound to Kinley. Gives it to Anderson down the left side. Anderson on that left side, flips it out to Jackson over to Kinley. Kinley, cross court to Anderson. Anderson alone for a three. He missed it. The rebound to Mawoka. 
Rebound. Maloka feeds Jordan McCabe, and then Jordan throws a poor bounce pass trying to hit Noel, and the man standing right there just took it. Kinley drives. Kinley throws it up wildly. Rebound taken away by Parquet. He throws it up ahead to Hall. Keyshawn Hall underneath. Oh. Keyshawn tried the dunk, and he got fouled. The foul called on uh, Ulogola. And it will be Keyshawn Hall going to the line to shoot two. Rebels leading 24-21 with 25 seconds to go in the first quarter. Checking in for UNLV, Keyshawn Gilbert returns to the game. McCabe goes to the bench. And Luis Rodriguez will check in after the first free throw. Hall makes it. UNLV. Keyshawn makes them both. And he'll go to the bench as Luis will check in. And, again, we started the first game against UBC. Now fresh off the plane, but there was a lot of line changes, full line subs. Now the last two games we've seen more kind of guy-by-guy based on the scenario and kind of what's going on on the court. Some new players in the game also for the Cascades. McCulloch tries to flip the ball to Alogala. Loose ball in the backcourt. And Alogala able to outbattle Webster for it, but then Luis Rodriguez comes over to try to steal it, and he got Alogala on the arm. 26-21 Rebels, 12 seconds to go. So the Cascades, I'm sure, will play for the last shot. McCullough in the game along with Clay Kurtz, young man's name. All right, McCullough front dribbling up against Keyshawn Gilbert. McCullough down the left side. McCullough. Comes left side with four with three and then throws the pass out of bounds, and that's entirely due to the ball-hawking defense of Keyshawn Gilbert. It's not the first time you've said something of the sorts, <laughs> not just on this trip, but just in the course of Keyshawn's career. Two seconds to go. Keyshawn can get a foul uh, shot off as he lost the ball going up, and that's the way the first quarter ends. 26-21. Runner Rebels with the lead against a, a team that can really shoot it from outside. But I think the coaches are going to ask the Rebels to pick up the defensive intensity just a little bit as we head into the second quarter. 26-21 Rebels. You're listening to Runner Rebel Basketball on the UNLV Sports Network. from Lear. All right, back here. Sorry about that. They've changed the uh, brakes on us. As Keyshawn Gilbert steals a pass in the front court, gets banged as he goes up for the layup. Great effort by Keyshawn to steal that pass. Rebels lead 26-21. John and Curtis with you from uh, the University of the Fraser Valley here in Abbotsford, British Columbia. Keyshawn will shoot two as uh, he was fouled going up for that layup. Gilbert knocks down the first free throw. Rebels start the second quarter as Keyshawn makes them both. With uh, Keyshawn, Elijah Parquet, Webster, Luis Rodriguez and Mawoka, so the same starting five. It's probably your best offensive lineup that you're going to have for the Rebels. Anderson drives, has it knocked away. Mawoka picks it up, feeds Parquet. Parquet up ahead to Rodriguez, back to Parquet, and he missed the layup, had the ball slip out of his hand. And now a foul in the backcourt, Keyshawn Gilbert committing the foul. It'll be uh, the Cascades ball out of bounds. 28-21 UNLV, Jackie Johnson to check back in for the Rebels. And Luis will go to the bench. Luis I mean, kind of wincing as he came off. Oh, I, yeah. I think he's just upset at himself. I think so, too. Yeah. I was going to say, I, th- I think we've talked about, like, the strength and the size of this team, but I think the quickness and the foot speed is something that we haven't touched on yeah. much, and this is probably one of the fastest teams end-to-end that UNLV's probably ever had. McCullough catches on the left side, down on the baseline, throws a pass out top to Lopez. He shoots a quick three. That's off the mark. No good. Webster rebounds for the Rebels. Cross-court pass in the backcourt to Gilbert. Keyshawn down the left side. Comes to the elbow to Mawoka cutting underneath. Oh, David yeah. spins, puts up with a left hand. It rolls out. Klim grabs the rebound for the Cascades. 28-21 Rebels. Under nine to go here in the second quarter. And Courtney Anderson had a couple of threes early. Catches the ball on the sideline. He was standing on the sideline. Kurtz Kind of left him, hung him out to dry there, and he didn't really have a chance to get in position. So the Rebels force another turnover, and they've done that quite a bit tonight. As Keyshawn Gilbert will bring it up. Into the front court. Parquet, Webster, out top left side to Gilbert. 
Comes down the left side, throws it back to Webster. Webster drives. Webster all the way under. Double clutch layup, no good. Mawoka high in the air for the rebound. Out to Jackie Johnson for a three, and he knocks it down. Again, it's the second time that David Mawoka's got an offensive rebound able to kick it out. First time to Justin Webster. This time to Jackie Johnson for the outside shot. So 31-21 as the Rebels open up a 10-point lead. Kurtz comes down the left side. Kurtz gets slammed to the deck as David Mawoka swats his shot out of bounds. He's all right. Just a little hurt ego, that's all. And substitutes in for the Rebels as Keyshawn Hall and Jordan McCabe checks in. Justin Webster and Keyshawn Gilbert out. 31-21, Rebels. Ball out of bounds, baseline left side for the Cascades. Kinley to inbound. Throws it to Anderson. Anderson on the left side. Bounces back to Klim. Now to Anderson. Anderson with four on the clock. Still a long way from the basket. Drives, comes in the lane, throws a pass back to Kurtz. As he's shot blocked by Jackie Johnson. Goes to Mooka, back to Jackie. Jackie double clutch layup, no good. It's blocked and he's fouled by Kurtz hustling. There's a heck of a defensive possession there by the Rebels. I mean, you got Keyshawn Hall chasing the guy off the screen, sliding his feet, pick and roll, switch with David onto the ball. Uh, Jackie blocks the shot. I don't know how many times we can say that Jackie Johnson blocked a jump shot, but he blocked a jump shot. He did. And then great awareness, Cleanly. great awareness by David to get the outlet up to him. Again, like we said, we're not putting too much weight and emphasis on this, but in the course of these three games, we've seen a lot of growth from the guys in terms of just their effort, uh, positioning, and understanding what the coaching staff wants them to try to execute. All right, Jackie at the line shooting two. Makes the first one. 32-21, Rebels. Rebels uh, have not allowed a a point for the Cascades thus far in the quarter. Jackie makes them both. 33-21, under eight to go. Kinley front court. Comes down the right side. Hall switches out on him. Kinley throws a pass. To the middle of the floor, Johnson got fouled by Kurtz reaching for it. Loose ball winds up on the wing, and uh, now a loose ball saved by Shane Noel to Parquet. Parquet up ahead to Keyshawn Hall. Hall, right corner, cross-court pass to McCabe. Bounce pass to Jackie, who doesn't take the three. Now he does take the three, and he hits the three. Some good action there in the open court by the guys. Again, started with the defense rebound by Shane Noel with the save, and then the outlet. Again, then things just start to roll. 36-21, Rebels. And so they've gone an 8 nothing run to start this, and now Kinley steps back and knocks down a 3. So there's the first bucket for the Cascades in the second quarter, 36-24, as we hit the 7-minute mark. McCabe out top. Leaves it for Jackie. Johnson across court pass out top to Parquet. Back to McCabe. McCabe out top left side. Comes middle of the floor. Steps back. He launches a three and he hits it. Jordan knocks down the three. Been waiting for Jordan to be able to knock down one from the outside. Hopefully that can see if kind of get him going. Just in confidence in terms of feeling like you're shooting it good. 39-24. 6.40 to go in the second quarter. Stay tuned at halftime. Of course, we'll uh, feature a few more interviews with some of these Rebels. Give you a chance to hear them and get to know them a little bit. Kinley drives, spins at the elbow, gets stopped, tries a pass inside to Kurtz, backhanded, knocked away by Parquet. Rebels run. Jackie Johnson has his layup blocked by Klim. Anderson cross-court pass to Kinley. Parquet thought he had it stolen. Kinley bounces inside to Klim, turns and shoots from the lane. No good, about a six-footer. And McCabe comes away with a rebound. Approaching the six-minute mark. Keyshawn Hall out top. Drives, spins, and lays it in. Keyshawn, acrobatic, and as acrobatic for his size as you're going to see. 41-24, Rebels. Anderson will bring it up for the Cascades, under six to go here in the second quarter. In the front court, Kurtz. Cross court pass way out top, Lopez. Left side, Kinley. Kinley Uh cross court to Anderson. He's all alone for a three. He missed it. Noel with the rebound, and Shane steaming up the floor. Middle of the court. Chain stops. 15-foot jumper went 14 and a half. Lopez the other way. Lopez tries a cross-court pass deflected. It goes to Klim. Now to Kurtz. Wide open in the corner. His three in and out. No good. Rebound tipped up twice. Keyshawn Hall able to save it to Jordan McCabe. And McCabe the other way. 5-10 to go. McCabe brings it out top. Leaves it for Noel. Out to Hall. Keyshawn Hall is going to shoot a three. That's off the mark, no good. 
This group might be a little bit tired, and Kevin oh, yeah. Kruger says he wants to call a timeout as soon as he has the opportunity. Anderson shoots a three the other way. That's no good. Both teams a little, little tired at this point. It's been a long stretch. Jackie Johnson drives. Jackie underneath. Scoop shot layup Jeez. rolls in. Nice job avoiding the charge. And Jackie with the bucket. And timeout on the floor. 4.44 to go. Second quarter. Rebels by 19. They've uh, outscored them uh, by 15-3 to three here in the second quarter. And you're listening to Runner Rebel Basketball on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, we want to say thanks to the great folks at Bell Limousine and Buses. Go to www.belllimousine.com the next time you need a limo, SUV, or charter. Or a party bus. Party bus. Party bus. <laughs> BellLimousine.com. Thanks to everybody at Bell Limousine. 43-24. John Curtis with you. 4.40 to go in the second quarter. Rebels have uh, really kind of clamped down on the Cascades here in the second quarter. Only allowed three points. Anderson, cross-court pass out to Kinley. Kinley gets a pick from Ologolo. Now throws it inside to Lope to uh, Klim. Back to the basket. Keyshawn Hall guarding him. Out to Jackson. Jackson back in the game. Lays it up. And oh. a blocking foul on Shane Noel. And a bucket for Chris Jackson out of Mojave High School. I asked Keyshawn Gilbert if uh, they knew each other. He says, yeah, I knew him. Mm-hmm. No. Keyshawn uh, and Jackson playing against each other. I think Keyshawn. Let's see. Chris is a. Th- so I think uh, Chris, is, I think Chris is one year behind Keyshawn. I think. Okay. And you got to remember Keyshawn also that, that last year that for the pandemic, Keyshawn moved back to St. Louis. Right, and exactly. Played. So Jackson a chance for a three point play. Makes the free throw 43 27. That's six points in the period now for the Cascades. 4.15 to go. And Jordan McCabe into the front court. Cross court to Webster who's back in the game. Back to McCabe. McCabe gets a pick from Keyshawn Hall. Stops at the foul line. Throws it back to Hall. Hall thinks about the long three. Back to McCabe. McCabe will shoot a three over Klim, and he'll knock it down. Jordan with his second three of the game. 46-27 runner Rebels. As Chris Jackson has the ball left side. To Ui Alogolo. Now a pass inside to Clem and a foul on Keyshawn Hall as McCabe dug down and stole the ball from Clem, but Hall called for holding from behind. And Keyshawn Gilbert will repl- replace Jordan McCabe with 3.49 to go here in the second quarter. Free throws coming up or a ball out of bounds for the Cascades. Remember, fans, get your Run and Rebel season tickets, new lower prices. Get your football season tickets, Rebels football. And single game tickets. Rebel football uh, starts next weekend, a week from tonight, as no, Kinley gets tomorrow. away from Keyshawn Hall. A week from tomorrow, pardon me, I forget what day it is. And the three is no good. Webster on the pass from Rodriguez up to Hall. Spin move, puts it up, an air ball no good. And Rodriguez fighting for the rebound. Jackson winds up with the ball, but he's out of bounds. It'll be Rebel ball with 3.34 to go. Call 739 fans or go to unlvtickets.com. Lady Rebel tickets on sale as well. Got to get them while they're hot. Special shout-out to Coach Marcus Arroyo, getting getting the boys ready for football season. Like I said, it opens a week from tomorrow against Idaho State at, at Allegiant Stadium. Stadium. Yep. Luis Rodriguez catches the inbounds pass, knocks down another three. Luis has been, I'd say, as impressive as anybody for the Runner Rebels on this trip. Yeah, there's some guys that you just see them in practice or in workouts. You're like, eh, a lot could be left to be desired. But two guys that I am I'm I like when you see them in live action, Keyshawn Hall and Luis, Luis Rodriguez. Keyshawn trying to draw a charge there, but I think he was moving, so he's called for a block. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Those are guys, when you see them in drills, you're like, yeah, okay, I see some stuff. But when you see them live, I mean, just Luis Rodriguez, he's active. He's yeah. everywhere on both ends of the floor. Um, and he finds a way to impact the game and get his, get his hands on the ball uh, to, to make plays for himself and his teammates. And then Keyshawn, you think, wow, this kid's got ability. He's big, light on his feet. But when you see him play, you're like, geez. Yeah, I mean, he can, the spin move he just did to get back to the paint to finish. Um, he can handle the ball. He can shoot. Those guys are, are guys you need to see live five on five to really appreciate their ability. All right. Cascades inbounding baseline right side. They throw it out top to Ologolo. Ologolo in the lane. Spins kind of out of control. Able to collect the ball. Give it back to Jackson. Jackson steps back. Shoots from the elbow. No good. And Justin Webster grabs the rebound. Gives it to Gilbert. Keyshawn flying down the middle of the floor. Keyshawn Stops under the basket, tries to go a pass to Webster. It's deflected, just unable to collect it. Drives in the lane. His floater is no good. And then a foul on Keyshawn Gilbert, fouling Chris Jackson 
on the arm going for the rebound, and Keyshawn was just frustrated there. One of the things about Gilbert that I've noticed, CT, is before the game, on the bus, practice, all this, he is really becoming a leader on this team, very vocal. He is, he is really kind of adopting that, that mantle. I think he's kind of taking it. Yeah, and I asked him when, as soon as we landed in Vancouver on uh, what heck, Tuesday, whatever day it was, when we landed, we're coming through the airport, going through customs, and waiting at baggage claim. I'm like, where, how are you feeling? Were you getting comfortable with your role? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, what are they asking you to do? He said, to lead. And most guys say score, to play defense, you know what I mean, to whatever the case, but bring energy, he said, to lead. And I was like, when are you going to start doing that? He said, now. And I think just his maturity, he's really grown over last year. And, I, and I'll keep making a point of this. When he missed that shot in the conference tournament that could extend the season, I think he took that hard, but he yeah. used that as motivation to continue to get himself better, and he has become the leader of this team, um, especially in a vocal way. Absolutely. He's got the basketball on the right side. One free throw was made. Tries to throw a lob to Mawoka. Not real good communication. Now loose ball picked up by Kinley. And Cascades head the other way. A Logolo runs over Justin Webster, and that's an easy call of charge. Good job by Justin to draw the charge. 49-28 Rebels with 2.34 to go in the first half. Based on the way things are playing out, I'd be safe to say that the Rebels are going to be one of the teams that take the most charges in college basketball this coming season. Because, um, again, they, continue, they just look to stand in there and to take them. Well, and it, I mean, it's part of the way they play defense. It is. It's built into their defense because you've got to be able to rotate from that weak side block to come across the lane, clear the charge circle, and these guys are making that effort to do that. All right, Rebels with the ball up by 21. Gilbert drives in from the left side in the lane. Double clutch shot is good as Keyshawn hit the deck. Nice off-balance floater by Keyshawn Gilbert. Now pass up ahead to Clem is too far. He's able to save it. Acrobatic play, throwing a pass behind his back that goes out near midcourt. Caught by Jackson. Left corner, Kinley shoots a three, and he hits another one. Boy, yeah, kids can shoot. He's throwing them in there for sure. 51-31, Rebels, by 20, with under two to go. Keyshawn Gilbert drives again. Keyshawn has the ball taken away by Jackson. Jackson down the right side. Jackson puts it up and in, lays it in. Keyshawn uh, just trying to do too much on his own there, 51-33. Keyshawn in the front court. Tries to hand the ball and a poor handoff to Rodriguez. The Rebels turn it over again. This time, David Mwoka is going to get called for a foul, just grabbing Anderson. And he'll go to the line and shoot free throws. 51 33 Rebels, a minute 36 to go, and McCabe's going to check in, along with Jackie Johnson, as Rodriguez and Gilbert, a little bit out of gas to the bench, and uh, Kevin Kruger calls a timeout. So a minute 36 to go, 51-33 Rebels here in the second quarter. You're listening to Run Rebel Basketball on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Curtis Terry here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, University of the Fraser Valley. want to thank Thomas Dermatology, full-service dermatological facility specializing in both cosmetic dermatology and skin cancer surgery. They also offer a full suite of med spa services like laser hair removal, tattoo removal, body contouring, and custom facials. Schedule an appointment online, www.com thomasderm.com or by calling 430-5333. Minute 36 to go. Anderson missed both free throws. And the Rebels maintain their 18-point advantage. They've given up five straight points, however, as they run the weave out top. McCabe with the ball now. Jordan gets a pick from Mawoka, comes down the left side, cross-court pass to Eshawn Hall, and he didn't make a good pass. Chris Jackson reaches up and grabs it and heads up the floor. Chris, Euro step, puts up with the right hand and in. Rebels have turned the ball over on three of their last four possessions. That sloppy play is not going to please Kevin Kruger. 51-35, approaching the one-minute mark. McCabe down the left side, under the basket, to a cutting Webster. Webster stops, gives it back out to Keyshawn Hall. Hall back to McCabe. McCabe into the lane, now steps back. Four on the shot clock. Webster, a three from the left side, is short. Hall with the rebound. Keyshawn maintains his balance. Oh, yeah. Pump fake, steps through, off-balance shot, rolls in. Nice job by Keyshawn Hall using his strength. It's a big old body he's putting on you when he gets that offensive rebound down there in the post. 53-35 with 30 seconds to go. Chris Jackson into the front court. Lost the dribble, goes back to get it. Jackson comes left side, bounces out to Clem. Clem launches a three, and he hits it. 53-38. So the Rebels will play for a final posi- final shot. Up only 15. I say only 15 because it was over 20 just a few moments ago. With 12, with 11, with 10, Keyshawn Hall just dribbling out top. Keyshawn waiting for a pick with 6. Keyshawn stops. 14-foot jumper, back iron, no good. 
Mocha tried to grab the rebound, lost it out of bounds, and uh, seven-tenths of a second to go. And uh, ball over to the Cascades. So a real good stretch early in the second quarter. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's been a little ragged. And the Rebels go to the locker room, leading by 15, 53 to 38 is the halftime score. We will step aside, and uh, when we come back, we'll uh, play some more of our interviews, the uh, introductory interviews with some of these Rebel players and coaches. We'll have that for you when we return here to the University of the Fraser Valley. Our halftime score, Runner Rebels 53, and the Cascades of UFV 38. You're listening to Runner Rebel Basketball on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. All right, back here at uh, University of the Fraser Valley. John and Curtis with you. Halftime score, Rebels 53 and Cascades 38. Uh, taking a look at the scoring for the Rebels. We are not provided with stats, so kind of have to do this old school way. But for <laughs> the Rebels, uh, Justin Webster had six on two made threes. Shane Noel had two. McCabe had six, made a couple of threes. Keyshawn Gilbert with six. David Mooka with four. Uh, Luis Rodriguez with 11. And that led uh, the Rebels. Uh, Eight points for Keyshawn Hall and ten points for Jackie Johnson. Jackie, it seems like Jackie gets up off the bench and he gets eight points. I mean, it happens in a hurry. Yeah. I mean, he almost scores faster than he runs. (laughs) Gets out there and finds a way to put the ball in the basket. All right. Obviously a a big disparity in, in talent level between these two teams. Yeah. How, I mean, the coaches, I'm sure, want to see the Rebels buckle down a little more and play that, that stretch that they played early in the, in the second quarter was really, really what they want to see, and they want to see it for most of this second half. Is that the message uh, in, in the locker room at halftime? Yeah, I mean, I think you, you, you kind of say don't play the scoreboard, right? I mean, because, again, if you're going to play the scoreboard, you're, you, it's, it's over. Yeah. But I think they want them to come out and kind of pretend like it's 0-0. Let's see if we can win the first five minutes of the half um, or of the quarter. But, but try to do it in a way that's such that you're, you're accomplishing, well, I mean, whatever the task may be. They, they may say, we want to see if we can get, you know what I mean, 10 points in transition. We want to see if we can hold them scoreless for X amount of time or don't let them get any paint touches or whatever the case may be. You, at this stage, you want to play the game within the game so that way you're trying to accomplish something because when you look at the scoreboard, it's probably not going to get much closer. The, the, the Rebels are most likely, barring, you know what I mean, hell freezing over, they're going to win this game. Uh, but that's not what it's about. They want to make sure that they're working on particular things, and I think it's going to be good things like trying to get how many reversals or how many ball touches can we get before we get a shot up? How many times can we prevent them from getting in the paint on the drive? Um, so I think it's those type of things that they want to focus on to make sure you're still going to accomplish something in these last 20 minutes of basketball. All right, the team uh, huddling around Coach Kruger. As, uh, and, and, you know, before we go any further, we need to send along some birthday wishes. Yeah, we do. Happy birthday to head coach Lon Kruger. The GOAT, the greatest of all time, Coach Lon Kruger. Happy birthday today. It's funny, my mom texted me this morning and she said, you know, you were supposed to be born on August 19th. And I was like, oh, it's only fitting because it's the day of that greatness was born. <laughs> um, um, I was a little late, but that's okay, um, like always. But it's, uh, you know, happy, happy birthday to Coach Lon Absolutely. Kruger. Um, I mean, I, I mentioned it on my Twitter and my Instagram at Coach Kruger afforded me an opportunity of a lifetime, um, and, the, and the fact that he was able to give me a sp- an opportunity to walk on at UNLV, it changed my life. Um, the UNLV um, community, the school, Las Vegas, um, obviously afforded me opportunities I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have had in life, um, and it started with Coach Long Kruger. So happy birthday, Coach! Coach, happy, healthy, and many, many more. All right, Rebels with the ball, moving from right to left. Keyshawn Gilbert into the front court, same starting five. Gilbert to Webster, out top. Luis Rodriguez, Luis. Flips the ball back to Gilbert. Gilbert out top to Mooka. Mooka to Parquet. Parquet down the left side. Stops. 16-foot jumper off the mark. No good. Mooka grabs the rebound. Mooka bounces inside to Parquet. And Elijah was a nice pass. Elijah took his hand, eyes off of it, and he dropped it. Heading the other way, Kinley gives it to Anderson. Anderson on the left side. Throws it out top to Klim. Klim, the big man, to Jackson. Jackson, Chris down the right side. Gets stopped. Kicks it out to Kinley. Kinley hit a couple threes in the first half. Cross court to Anderson. Anderson flips up a jumper from the baseline and knocks it down. That's not what the Rebels wanted. 53 to 40. And they got all, took advantage of a little shot clock violation. 24 second shot clock. Red 35 when that shot went up. But that happens. Keyshawn Gilbert out top to David Mooka. Right side to Luis Rodriguez. Rodriguez comes middle of the floor. Back to Parquet, down low to Mooka. Mooka goes baseline. Mooka underneath. 
Little head fake, lays it up, no good. Battling for the rebound, can't control. Jackson comes away with it. Jackson flying down the lane, lays it up and in. 4 nothing. run to start the half for the Cascades, and they cut the lead to 11, 53-42. Gilbert front court. Gilbert down the left side, now brings it back out top. Luis Rodriguez fakes the three. Luis kicks the ball to Parquet. A three from the right side is good. Elijah Parquet knocks it down, 56-42, Rebels. Great job making the defense move there. It obviously started with Keyshawn Gilbert attracting attention. But then Luis with a shot fake, two dribbles, draw in that corner defender, get that corner kick. Jackson with the ball in the front court. Jackson lost the dribble, gets it back, loses it again, gets it back. Cross-court pass to Lopez. He's open for a three, and he hits it. 56-45. The Rebels are going to give up some looks at three on that skip pass, that yeah, cross-court pass. Because they're overloading so much. They're trying to protect the paint, protect the drive on the drives. Keyshawn Gilbert out to Justin Webster. Webster a three. That's no good. Klim with the rebound. Gives the ball to Kinley. Kinley up ahead to Jackson. Jackson quickly in the front court to Anderson on the right side. Anderson step back. Oh, no. Air ball. And the rebound, Mawoka feeds Webster. Webster flying down the right side. Webster lays it up and missed the layup. Klim was there, the big man. He tried to get it over him and couldn't do it. Jackson up ahead to Anderson. Anderson shoots a three, and he hits it, and it's 56-48. to 48. So they've outscored the Rebels, uh, have the Cascades by seven, 10-3 to three to start this, sec- this third quarter. Not what Coach Kruger and staff wanted. Keyshawn Gilbert over to Rodriguez. A three for Luis is good. Rodriguez, that drive and kick three is going to be a powerful weapon for the Rebels this year. Oh, yeah. 59-48. And, again, they've got a couple guys that can turn that corner. Jordan McCabe obviously being able to play off the balance in the pick and roll. Keyshawn just because he's quick. Jackie Johnson because he's even quicker. And EJ Harkless because he knows how to play the game. Guys are going to have to step up and knock down shots. Rodriguez gets double teamed and then loses the ball out of bounds. Great. Trapping defense, Webster and Mawoka combining to force the turnover. And now four new Rebels will check in. McCabe, Keyshawn Hall, Jackie Johnson, and Shane Noel. As Keyshawn Gilbert, the only starter in the third quarter, left on the floor. 59-48 Rebels, 6.43 to go here in the third quarter. Into the front court, Jordan McCabe gives the ball to Johnson. Jackie out top to Keyshawn Gilbert, back to McCabe. McCabe middle of the floor, now comes down the right side, kicks the ball right wing to Noel. Noel goes baseline, stops, trying to get it to Mawoka and throws a terrible pass. Just for right to Klim. Kinley front court, careless basketball. Hands the ball to Jackson. Jackson curls in the lane. He lost it out of bounds, and it went off one of the Rebels, I guess. And it will be Cascade's ball. With 6.17 to go, and the Rebels leading 59-48. Kinley to inbound baseline left side. Kinley throws a lob inside to Lopez, and Jackie Johnson standing there to knock the ball away. Jackie flying down the floor as a shot blocked by Kim. Klim, pardon me, but Noel trailing the play, lays it up and in. 61-48. Heads up play by Shane Noel, seeing the big man chase down. And that's something that Shane didn't do in the first half when Keyshawn Hall got a, got a breakaway, got fouled on the dunk attempt, and the coaches made a point to him. You always have to trail the play. Easy chance, easy opportunity to get a basket. Jackie does the same thing. Steals the ball up ahead to Shane Noel for the two-handed slam dunk. And it's 63-48. They got a technical foul. Oh, for what? Oh. I'm not really sure. I'm it's on the it. Rebels. I don't know. We'll let them sort that for out. For what? But we'll talk about again. We'll talk. Take, take a chance to talk about Shane Noel there. Yeah. Again, we talked about this the other day um, in terms of I, I kind of had a conversation with Shane. Like, hey, I mean, try, to, try to do everything else on the court instead of worrying about scoring. Because we know the kid can score. He was a top 50 kid coming out of high school at Eastside Catholic in Seattle, going to Arizona, transferring here. At times you see him pressing a little bit in terms of trying to score and trying to find his way to fit in. Um, and I again told him, I was like, try to do everything else, man. Uh, try to try to be a great defender. Try to get loose balls, deflections. Um, and again, him running the lane is going to create him opportunities. He got a put back, now gets a dunk in transition. It's great to see guys have success and, and open up the game a little bit for themselves. All right, the two technicals are made, 63-49, or pardon me, one of the two is made. Anderson on the right side gets trapped in the corner again, and oh. this time they're going to call a foul on Jackie Johnson for playing defense. 63-49 Rebels, 5.33 to go. 
Ball out of bounds in front of the Rebel bench to our right. There's not many times Jackie's not the smallest guy on the court. But tonight's one of them. He's got a couple inches. <laughs> on, on, on Anderson, yeah. <laughs> pass down low to Lopez, not a good pass, and it's thrown out of bounds. Good defense on that out-of-bounds play by the Rebels. 63-49, Jordan McCabe quickly into the front court. Jordan out top, hands to Gilbert, cross court to Jackie. Jackie back to McCabe, McCabe top of the key. Left side to Johnson. Johnson steps back. He'll shoot a three. Jackie's three is off the mark. Lopez gets the pass. Nice job by McCabe to stop him. He flips it back to Anderson. Anderson front court. Anderson comes right side. Anderson drives. Off balance jump shot from the baseline. No good. Rebound tipped out to Kinley. His three is way off the mark. Shane Noel grabs the rebound. Then he heads the other way. Under five to go. Shane front court. Shane to the elbow. He'll shoot a 15-foot jumper, and he'll knock it down. Noel getting a little more, more comfortable, 65-49. And, again, I think it's because you're, you're not worrying about scoring. You're doing everything else on the floor, and you find yourself naturally in position to have opportunities. Lopez gets stopped on the baseline. Cross-court pass out to Anderson. Now to Klim. Kinley on the left side. Kinley walks in and lays it in. That's not going to make the, – the Rebel coaches all kind of just grimace in unison as they let the kid just walk in, 65-51. McCabe out top, long three for Jordan, way off the mark. And Anderson the other way. 4-10 to go, Klim at the elbow on the right side to Anderson. Anderson comes right side, a floater from the baseline off the glass is good. Rebels just uh, not showing the effort on defense, I think, that's going to satisfy the coaches right now. Jackie Johnson the other way. Jackie blows by his man, then Kinley blocks the ball out of bounds. Good recovery there. Four new Rebels on the floor, Rodriguez, Mawoka, Parquet, and Webster as Gilbert, Noel, Hall, and Johnson head to the bench. Rebels by 12, 65-53. They led by 15 at halftime. So very much as Rodriguez catches on the left wing, Luis drives. Luis underneath, tried to dunk it, and got fouled. He'll shoot two free throws with 3.56 to go. But, Curtis, you said, you know, come out and try to win the third quarter. They're losing the third quarter. Yeah, right I know. Now. They didn't, didn't listen to me. But I wasn't the one delivering the message, though, either. <laughs> I was just, I was not just, your if fault. I, if I was in charge. Um, uh, I, I, I'm sure this is not what the coaches said. No, no, not at all. But, like you said, I mean, they're, they're spurts where they see three or four good possessions, and you see them kind of fall asleep for a couple of possessions. Um, and again, Somewhat understandable. Yeah, and that's the hard part in situations like this. I mean, again, you're, this is your third game in four days. Um, and actually, it's your, yeah, it's your third game in four days. Um, and just the situation, you're away from home. It's not typical what, how you're going to be, how your games are going to be. Um, and so you can understand having kind of those mental lapses, those mental lulls of, of not focusing every possession. Both free throws made by Rodriguez. Now Kurtz drives and he gets fouled. 67-53. Kurtz will go to the line and shoot two. Or they say it was on the dribble. It was on the dribble. Okay. Third foul on the Rebels in the quarter. Ball comes into Lopez. He hands back to Kinley. Kinley brings it way out top. Mooka winds up on him. Kinley drives, gets stopped, spins back, has the ball knocked away by Rodriguez. Kinley picks up the dribble with six on the clock, feeds Anderson. Anderson or Alogolo, that's a fall away jumper on the baseline, no good. McCabe comes away with the ball, gets stopped in the backcourt. Jordan gets fouled by Alogolo. Who didn't like the call, apparently. Uh-oh. He, oh, wee. He said, oh, wee. That's a bad call. And he flipped his hands at the official. Forget about it. <laughs> 67-53 Rebels. 325 to go. Jordan will bring it up. Comes right side. Hands to Webster. Webster across the middle of the floor. Parquet back to McCabe. McCabe gets a pick for Mooka, drives right side. McCabe, there's a pass out to Rodriguez. <laughs> Rodriguez almost traveled to Parquet, down low to Mooka. David spins to the baseline, steps through as his shot blocked by Klim, gets in the air, puts it up too strong. Rodriguez battling for the rebound, but Klim able to control after a couple of tips, and then Luis fouls on a reach-in. That's not, uh, not a good foul by Luis. Clem did a good job holding his ground against mm-hmm. David Mooka. David mm-hmm. outweighs him. Clem's a tall guy, long Definitely arms. Definitely long. Keyshawn Gilbert will check back in. Luis will go to the bench. Rebels with a little pressure in the backcourt. Chris Jackson 
from Mojave High School bringing it up. Jackson, hounded by Parquet, comes middle of the floor, spins back, tries oh. to dribble between his legs and lost the ball. Keyshawn Gilbert quickly into the front court. Keyshawn back to McCabe, steps into a three. Jordan's three, short. Mooka there to grab the rebound, throws it back to Parquet. Rebels reset. McCabe has it. Cross to Parquet, left side to Gilbert, back to Parquet. Long three for Elijah is an air ball. McCabe can't save it as the ball hit the end line. Elijah off with his shooting touch there. 2.25 to go, 67-53 Rebels. Arminus Ilsiukas has checked in for the Cascades, just to do me a favor. <laughs> Just to make sure you're still awake. <laughs> Kinley with the ball on the left side. Kinley comes baseline. Throws a pass up in the air that uh, avoided a bunch of arms, but I guess he got pushed. They called a foul or got hit on the arm throwing that pass. Rebels bailed him out. Keyshawn Gilbert, who g called for the foul, looks at the coaching staff and says, all I did was held my ground and put my hands up in the air. He comes to the bench. Jackie Johnson will check in for him. And it's uh, the fifth team foul on the Rebels in the quarter. I've, I've reached that point, John. This bench sitting on the here, benches. Yeah, we, we're sitting sitting in the bleachers. My, my buns are toasted. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt's going to lean back a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sixty-seven fifty-four as he makes the free throw. Two oh eight to go in the third quarter. And uh, both free throws made. Anderson checks back in for Kinley. So, Rebels kind of let him hang around. 12-point lead. Certainly did not expand the lead the way maybe we expected here in the third quarter. Johnson front court. Webster to McCabe. Left side out top. McCabe drifts to his left, comes to the elbow, all the way down the left side. There's a pass out to Parquet, top of the key to Johnson. Jackie traveled, starting his dribble. Just, yeah, you know, all these mistakes, just a... A little bit of a lack of focus, I yeah. think. A little lack of discipline in that situation. Yeah. If he can catch that ball maybe a half step off the three-point line instead of four steps off the three-point line, you don't have to jab so hard to try to create that separation. You can give a little shot fake with your eyes and your shoulders to get your defender to rise up. But most of the time, they're not going to flinch when you're at 27 feet. L.C. Alcas gets out of trouble. Ball winds up with Kurtz. Right side to Jackson for a three. It's long. Jordan McCabe. Tries to save it behind his back and throws it right to Kurtz. And then David Mooka grabs Kurtz. And he had to because McCabe put him in a bad spot. Jordan, for a guy as experienced as he is, needs to know he, he, he's, he's got to cool the, the flash a little bit in situations like this just to help his teammates get into the rhythm. It's a little too much sauce from yeah. Mr. McCabe at times. And then they call an intentional foul. They called an intentional foul on David Mooka. And Kevin Kruger looking at the officials as if to say, what are you talking about? A minute 24 to go in the third quarter. Rebels up 12, 67-55. You're listening to Run Rebel Basketball. You know these sports. Finlay Toyota brings you UNLV basketball. Here's John Sandler and Curtis Terry. Fans, remember... Rebel football gets underway a week from tomorrow. Allegiant Stadium against Idaho State. Call 739-FANS. Go to UNLVTickets.com. Lady Rebel season tickets on sale. Pick those up. Lindy of the Rock squad defending Mountain West Conference champs. Rebel volleyball starting up. And, of course, uh, runner Rebel season tickets on sale. 739-FANS. Or go to UNLVTickets.com. So they called an intentional foul on David Mooka on that, uh, that play. So... Kurt's got two free throws, and he made them both to cut the lead to 10, and the Cascades get the ball back. Kevin Kruger in the timeout was uh, speaking to his team rather sternly, kind of challenging them. Jackson catches left side, lost the ball going up, but Klim's there to get it to a cutting Kurtz, has his shot blocked from behind by Parquet, and a foul called on Elijah, and Kurtz will go back to the line to shoot two to cut the lead to single digits. Not what we expected. This is where a little leadership on this team needs to come out, whether it's McCabe or Keyshawn Gilbert, who's not on the floor right now, or one of the one of the newer players. 
and yeah, it's August, but this is a this is a great opportunity for one of those guys to step up. Yeah, you got to got to try to find your moments. Um, because you may say, I'm going to wait till we get to the season or I'm going to wait for, for this. Opera. No, you better, whenever you get a chance to try to improve or to try to lead, somebody's got to step up and grab the bull by the horns, as so they say, and, and try, to, try to make a point and make a statement. It's a great time to do so now. One of two free throws made. Nine-point Rebel lead with a minute ten to go in the third quarter. McCabe with the ball out top. Jordan comes all the way under and then just gets Super himself ball. in the air and turns it over again. Kurtz the other way. Hurts down the lane and puts up a wild shot, and they bail him out with a foul call. That's a, that is just an absolutely horrible call. But he'll go back to the line and shoot free throws. And you know, frankly, Jordan McCabe it's too unselfish sometimes. Is well, not that only situ- that he could that was a situation where you could, like, he could try to finish that one, but then his his being unselfish becomes he's flashy with it. Exactly, and he gets up in the air yeah, and he has nothing yeah, to do with it. And he he knows better. Than he that. does. He does. He's he's not his first time playing college ball. Eight-point lead, 67-59, with a minute to go here in the third quarter. The Rebels haven't scored in about three minutes, and they keep turning it over and fouling. Second free throw coming up for Kurtz. Sixty-seven, sixty. The Rebels outscored by eight here in the second, in the third quarter. Under a minute to go, McCabe gives the ball to Webster. Webster to Jackie Johnson, back to McCabe. Jordan, just dribbling out top, spins, throws the ball to Johnson. Johnson going to drive, Jackie underneath, double clutch layup wow. is good and a foul. Acrobatic play by Jackie getting inside and a chance for a three-point play. Foul, I believe, on Jackson, 69-60 with 43.6 to go. Well, they say is you get the ball up on the rim and you give yourself a chance, and that's what Jackie did there. He got it up off the glass. It bounced high off the rim, um, and he got the roll for the two. Jackie misses the free throw. Now Parquet knocks the rebound away from Jackson but unable to go get it, and his teammates weren't hustling to, to go get the loose ball. And they call a seven. Eight second. An eight second violation of that court. That's and they gave him nine. Yeah. <laughs> so the Rebels, after after the rebound, the Rebels uh, do stop them in the backcourt and force the turnover, up 69-60 to 60 with 35 seconds to go. And McCabe gets the inbounds pass. Jordan, middle of the floor, and a holding foul mm-hmm. called on uh, my buddy Arminas Ilsiukas. He's an uh, arts major. From Richmond, BC. Ball thrown in the backcourt. Jordan McCabe goes to get it. And it's a backcourt violation. There's a rule that the Rebels aren't familiar with in these FIBA rules. And I'm sure the official, or at least the official, should have told Jordan Webster, Justin Webster, who was inbounding that ball, you can't throw it in the backcourt. I don't know if he did. Anderson drives, lost the ball going up. Hall tips it. Jackie Johnson who comes away with it. Jackie on the right side. Jackie out to McCabe. All alone for a three. No good. And a foul on the rebound. Keyshawn Hall. Keyshawn made a freshman mistake there. When Jackie came into the front court, he went down the right side, and Keyshawn just stood there at the foul line. Yeah. If he had cut down the lane, Jackie would have fed him, and he would have had an easy layup. you got to drag and pull all the way through. Give your, give your ball handle, especially a guy less lightning quick like Jackie Johnson. Give him a lane because you're going to pull that defense out. So Clem shooting free throws now, 69-60, 14 seconds to go. And uh, at the very least, this will be tape that uh, the coaching staff will spend some time with mm-hmm. when we get back to Las Vegas. Come home tomorrow morning early Bird. after a bus trip back to Vancouver of better than an hour. And then uh, I think the guys have a week off before they reconvene. But this, I'm sure, will be uh, – some teaching points. Both free throws are made, and it's now a six-point, or uh, pardon me, a seven-point Rebel lead, 69-62. Ten seconds to go. McCabe out top right side. McCabe chucking and jiving, gets his man in the air, throws a lob pass out to Webster with two, back to McCabe for a three. Mm. He missed another one. Jordan had a very rough quarter, and it's just a seven-point Rebel lead at the end of three, 69-62. 
All right, fourth quarter about to begin. Rebels up just 7, 69-62 here against the University of the Fraser Valley Cascades. And the Cascades with the ball. Kinley, who had a bunch of threes early, gives the ball to Kurtz. Kurtz out top, watched by Keyshawn Gilbert to Kinley in the right corner. Kinley on the baseline. There's a hook pass out to Chris Jackson. Jackson on the baseline has his pass deflected and stolen by Elijah Parquet. Parquet up ahead to Gilbert. Back to Webster. A three for Justin's off the mark. No good. Rebels have gone ice cold. Mooka with the rebound. Feeds Gilbert. Gilbert launches a three. That's no good. And Kinley with the rebound. Cross-court pass to Jackson. Up ahead, Lopez. Lopez guarded by Rodriguez. Goes baseline. Kicks it back to Clem. He's open for a three. He missed it. And David Mooka with the rebound. Luis Rodriguez. Bounce pass up ahead to Keyshawn Gilbert on the right wing. Keyshawn, he goes baseline, comes underneath the basket, flips it out to Elijah Parquet, shoots a three, missed it. And the ball knocked out of bounds by a hustling Luis Rodriguez. Things got a little sloppy, a little messy at the end of that third quarter. It's carried over a little bit. Yeah. And when I say messy, I'm talking like throw up in the back of an uber messy. Like that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll cost you. <laughs> that'll cost you 100 bucks. That'll cost you. <laughs> Oof. Chris Jackson drives right side. Floater off the back iron, no good. And a loose ball. Jackson picks it up and lays it in. 69-64. Rebels just standing around. Kevin Kruger really unhappy. Justin Webster. Now top Parquet took his eye off the ball and lost it. And now a foul. Elijah Parquet with absolutely no concentration whatsoever on that. Just let the ball. Simple handoff. Yep. Jackie Johnson into the game, and Elijah will go to the bench. He knows it. Rebels by just five with 8.20 to go. And, I mean, this would be the biggest win in the, in the history of this school, maybe, if, if they somehow are able to do this. And it would be. Let's not start going there. Lopez shoots a jumper from the baseline. That's no good. Mooka grabs the rebound, feeds Rodriguez. Cross-court pass up ahead to Johnson. Jackie front court. Eight minutes to go. Jackie comes middle of the floor. Out to Keyshawn Gilbert, or Luis Rodriguez, pardon me, for a three. Here we, and So this is the thing, this issue I've got here. We started the game, we, we think we made, what, four of six threes to start yeah. the game. The guys have made a, a number of, of, of them since then. Yeah. But that's all we're shooting. Yes, that's the problem here. It's This is the third game in, in four nights. You had the travel issues, um, everything that's going on, and – in the fourth quarter here, you can't start jacking up a bunch of threes. And that's all they're doing. You, have, you didn't have legs when you guys got to Canada. You're definitely not going to have legs when you leave Canada. We've got to start playing a little bit smarter. And those are things you can just really kind of key in on and try to get better mentally at. Clem with a three straight away. That's short. Long rebound comes to Keyshawn Gilbert. Keyshawn pushing it up the floor. Keyshawn got fouled underneath as he tried to throw a lob to Mooka. And the foul called on Kurtz. It'll be Rebel Ball out of bounds, I would imagine. Or are they going to give him free throws? Even though he's throwing a lob to David Mooka, they're giving him free throws. All right. They're talking about it. They're considering it. Yep, they're giving him two shots. All right. Keyshawn will take it. 7.41 to go. 69-64. Rebels by five. Rebels by six. That's the first point for the Rebels in a, in a long time. A long time. Mm -hmm. And he missed the second free throw. And David Mooka goes right over the back of Clint. Easy call. 70 to 64. Keyshawn Hall will replace Mooka. Six-point lead. Oh. And bounce pass to Lopez. Rodriguez goes for the steal, and that should have given the Cascades an easy basket, but Lopez threw the ball out of bounds. Rebels got a huge break there. Gambling on defense is not something that uh, the coaches are encouraging. I don't even know if that's legal in Canada, is it, gambling? <laughs> we passed a casino oh, on we, the way out I was here. asleep, John. Yeah, I don't I know. know. We did pass a casino on the way oh, out Okay. Here. Guess you can. <laughs> Seven and a half to go, 70 to 64. Keyshawn Gilbert flying into the lane, lays it up and in. Keyshawn with the bucket. 
72 to 64. Keyshawn saying, look, if you guys aren't going to do it, I will. 7.20 to go. Justin Ooh. Webster put it. his arm right around Kinley as he made the steal. And, and that, I mean, it was, a, it was a nice play, but that left hand went around the hip of Kinley, yeah. and they call the foul. Just did it where the referee yeah. could see that one. Shane Noel will check in, and Justin will go to the bench. 7.19 to go. Rebels up 72-64 to 64 in a game they led by 20 in the second quarter. Yeah. Inbounds pass to Clem, back to oh. Kinley, shoots a three, and he, he made it. He's been dropping them I mean, all night. And Keyshawn Gilbert points to himself, said that was my fault. He was guarding the inbounds pass. And that's that's just a, a standard play. Flip the ball in, throw it right back to him. So 72-67, Gilbert down the left side. Keyshawn tries, oh. tries to throw a pass. It's blocked in the middle of the lane. Kinley comes the other way, bounces to Jackson. Jackson lays it in, and it's a three-point game. Mm. This is unbelievable. Jackie Johnson to Shane Noel. 6.40 to go. Still a long time to go. Rodriguez back to Johnson. Johnson drives. Johnson has the ball knocked away and a foul call late. Rebel ball out of bounds. McCabe checks back in. And Keyshawn goes to the bench. You notice when the Rebels were having success in, in that second quarter when they opened things up, it was because there was a lot of driving and kicking. There wasn't a lot of just dribble, dribble, cross over the, between my legs, behind my back. It was just shot, fake, jab, drive, kick, making the extra pass. Not a lot of wasted movement. Jackie Johnson catches the inbounds pass, mm-hmm. shoots a three, and the ball hits the 24-second uh, shot clock that's on the top of the scoreboard. It's not recessed. It's just it's even with it, so it's easy to hit. And... Uh, that's no good. So it's a three-point Rebel lead with 6.34 to go. The other thing they were doing when they were dominating is they were playing defense. And rebounding. Yeah, yeah. they haven't done a lot of that. Nope. Anderson front court. Anderson. Oh. Just launches a wild three. It's an air ball. And goes out of bounds. Quickly the other way. Keyshawn Hall on the right side. Keyshawn gets stopped, flips it out to McCabe, fakes the three, out to Johnson. Jackie will shoot the three, and he'll hit it. So Jackie Johnson knocks down the three, 74-69. 75-69. Now Webster steals the ball in the backcourt, gives it to Johnson. Jackie drives underneath to Keyshawn Hall. Hall pump fake, lays it in, and a foul. And just like that. Well, I mean, it's just a look. It's not. If these guys are interested, they're going to dominate. Yeah. And it's just a question of their level of interest. So they score five straight points, and Sounds Keyshawn like Hall <laughs> will shoot a free throw when we get back. 77-69 Rebels late here or, or about midway through the fourth quarter. You're listening to Run Rebel Basketball on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. All right, 5.57 to go in the uh, fourth quarter. Donna Kurt with you, 77-69 Rebels. As uh, Keyshawn Hall's at the line trying to convert a three-point play. He does not as his free throw is short. Shane Noel and Lopez... Shane does a great job tying up Lopez on that rebound. And the Rebels get the ball on the alternating possession. Jordan McCabe inbounding from the baseline on the left side with 5.55 to go. Gets the ball to Jackie Johnson on the wing. Jackie throws it out top to Hall. Keyshawn spins. Throws it back to McCabe. Wide open for a three. McCabe, back iron, no good. Jackie Johnson hustles for the rebound. Feeds Webster. Justin's three. No good. Keyshawn Hall tried to grab the rebound. He couldn't. Jordan McCabe couldn't grab it. Now Anderson throws the ball length of the court. And Jackie Johnson intercepts it. Goes high in the air and flies down the court. Gives the ball to Webster. Webster drives. Webster gets banged. And uh, a foul on Chris Jackson. Justin will go to the line and shoot two. I think Arroyo's got enough safeties out there roaming around. Yeah, the Jackie's Patina a little football complex. Play safety. But He's got the heart of a lion to go out there and do it. <laughs> Luis Rodriguez checks in for Shane Noel with 5.25 to go, and Justin Webster at the line shooting two. The Rebels lead 77 69. So while we've got a break in the action, I'm going to have to give a shout out here. We've got the parents of a former Rebel athlete, Melissa okay. Mabanta, former okay. Rebel golfer. Her parents, her mom and dad, are in the building. Um, and she is a significant other of another former running rebel, Mr. Scotty Hoffman. Their uh, nuptials coming up next year, right? January 21st, yeah. I believe. 
In the Hopefully Caribbean. we don't have a game. Otherwise, you're going to be calling it by yourself there, Mr. Sandler. <laughs> well, I don't know. You know. Do you know where the wedding is? As Jackson's yeah, out do. top right side. Yeah. Jackson drives. Jackson puts up a wild shot. No good. Keyshawn Hall with the rebound. Much better defense there by the Rebels. Keyshawn into the front court. Now stops. Comes to the middle of the floor. Now heads down the lane. Oh, golly. Takes the ball. Hooks it in the air, brings it down, and then gets fouled as he went to the rim. I don't think a, 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 a man of that size should be able to do the things that he does with the basketball. I mean, he's again, he's light on his feet. He's very shifty with the basketball in his hands. But that pro move hop step right there from right to left and then try to finish, tough move. Keyshawn makes the free throw, and it's 79-69, back to a 10-point lead. So the Rebels have scored seven, now eight straight points. And I think Keyshawn's got them all. Keyshawn Hall, big key, major key. Major key alert. 80 to 69. Under five minutes to go. Anderson front court, watched by Rodriguez. Anderson gives the ball to Clem. Back to Anderson on the right wing. Might have double dribbled over to Jackson, and Jackson was standing out of bounds. Good defense again by the Rebels, as uh, I think the coaches finally got their attention. Yeah. 4.45 to go. It's like, hey, do you, want, do you want this week off next week or not? <laughs> Up ahead to Rodriguez. Back to McCabe, who will set the offense. Jordan backs it away. Kevin Kruger calling out the play. Jordan into Keyshawn Hall. Hall back to the basket. Backing in. Steps through. Gets the ball out to Johnson. Ugh. And ja Jackie was standing on the sideline. You mentioned the other day the, the three-point line's a little further out, yeah. so that space is very tight on the sideline. Rebels have done that a couple of times. That's why, the, again, you talk about taking that false step. We talked about that a lot the last two years, guys catching in the corner, taking that false step, stepping out. In this case, you've got to have those feet set when you catch. You've got to go straight in your shot. You shouldn't have to load into it. Anderson gets the ball to Jackson. Jackson, cross-court pass to Lopez along the baseline. Out to Kinley. Kinley drives to Jackson all by himself, but a charging foul on Kinley. Nice job by Keyshawn Hall drawing another charge. That's exactly what that play is designed to do defensively. Yep, that's exactly it. you got to have that trust and faith that if I'm going to get take the high side and force that down, force that drive, that your defender, your team in the weak side is going to come across from that weak side block to be the midline, and then from there they're going to step outside that charge circle, take a square in the chest, picture perfect. 80-69 to 69 Rebels, 4.06 to go. In the fourth quarter. Stay tuned uh, after a short break. We hope to get uh, Coach Kruger for a final time here on the trip uh, at the end of the ball game in our abbreviated Rebel Wrap-Up show. Jackie Johnson into the front court. Gives it to Rodriguez. Now Webster back to Jackie out top left side. Jackie tries to go to the middle of the floor. Jackson stops him. Now he comes down the left side. Jackie all the way under, lays it up. Mm. No good. Missed the layup. Anderson the other way. Anderson stops. He shoots uh, a, a wild shot from outside, air ball, and Ooh. tries to take it from Justin Webster. Justin goes behind the back, kicks it out to McCabe. McCabe over to Luis Rodriguez. A three for Luis. Off the mark, no good. The Rebels' uh, outside shooting touch has disappeared into the Canadian night. Kinley, left side to Lopez. Again, Rodriguez goes for the steal. That allows a scramble for the Rebels, or forces a scramble defense. Lopez grabs an offensive rebound as he's shot deflected by Rodriguez underneath. Luis hands the ball to Johnson, and with 3.05 to go, it remains 80-69. to 69. Jackie quickly in the front court. Encouraged by Coach Peary, who remembered that it's an eight-second rule in the backcourt there. Only six on the shot clock. I don't know if Jordan McCabe knows that. Now there's 30 on the shot clock. McCabe out to Johnson. Johnson, yeah, that was all messed up. There was five on the shot clock, and then all of a sudden there was 35 on the shot clock, and I think the Rebels kind of didn't know what was going on, and it's a, a shot clock violation. 2.47 to go. As Keyshawn Gilbert and David Mawoka re-enter, Keyshawn Hall and Jordan McCabe go to the bench. It remains 80 to 69. Keyshawn Gilbert hounding Jackson in the backcourt. Rebels open the regular season November the 7th against Southern. As now Luis Rodriguez steals a ball. Gets the ball to Johnson. Open for a three from the left side. Jackie made it. 
Jackie knocks down the three, 83-69. Rebels regular season. Now Keyshawn Gilbert steals the ball in the backcourt and gets fouled by Jackson, and he'll shoot free throws. Boy, Coach Peary, Barrett Peary, who is a really high-quality coach, Rebels very fortunate to get him as one of the three new assistants, is uh, really vocal. Let's put it that way tonight. I don't think he is pleased with the, the focus and energy that the team has shown. As Gilbert makes the free throw. Eighty-four sixty-nine. Eighty-five sixty-nine. Keyshawn made them both. So after uh, they'd cut the lead to three, the Rebels have gone on a thirteen nothing run. And I'm sure it was during that timeout as Kurtz comes down the left side. Now Rodriguez steals the ball from Kurtz, three on one. He's going to lob to Gilbert. Gilbert lays it in. So a 15 to nothing run now. And I'm sure the Rebel coaches challenged the Rebels' pride at that point. 87-69, under two minutes to go. Kinley and travels. The Rebels force another turnover. That was Justin Webster and Jackie Johnson. This team has been really good when their defense has been, as the coaches ask, active yeah. and active and working together as a unit. Go figure, right? It's kind of like when you say, and I said this, I think, I don't know if it was, I told this to EJ, EJ on the bus. It's like when, you, when you're playing and you, you think, okay, let's try it your way. Go ahead, see how you guys want to do it. It didn't work on Tuesday against UBC. It's like, okay, now you try it my way. And it's worked since they tried it Coach Kruger's yep. way. Um, but it's one of those things when you listen to them and, you, and they accomplish and they execute what they want them to accomplish, they're going to be a very tough team when they're engaged, when they're playing defense, when they're communicating, when on the weak side, when they're sharing and making plays for each other. And, and I get it. I mean, you come into this gym, you, you, you're playing yeah. a team of lesser ability, and your tendency, it's the end of the trip, right. all of that is, is to lose focus. But – the coaches have higher standards, and they demand well, they more should. of these guys. They should. And I think, again, as part, and we talk about kind of building the culture and building the program, but Coach Kevin Kruger's had to do this two years in a row now. Two off-seasons right. in a row, you've had to build a program, build a culture. Um, and that's kind of the landscape of college college basketball, for sure, and college athletics with the transfer portal. But I think they're, they're doing a great job, and it's just a matter of time before you get it to really start to stick and become habit. Jackie Johnson misses a three, and the ball ricochets out of bounds off Molka. So with a minute 36 to go, the Rebels uh, 87 to 69. And Ooh. Rebels force, Keyshawn Gilbert forces another turnover in the backcourt. I say pressure bust pipes. I mean, eventually you just, you, when you keep wearing on you, you're eventually going to have some mistakes. And that's the last couple possessions. That's what we've seen from the Cascades. Just, just self-inflicted turnovers. Rebels get the ball back. David Moloka out top. Gives the ball to Gilbert. Keyshawn cross-court pass to Johnson. A three from the right side. Jackie is short. Might be showing the, the wear and tear. And another turnover forced this time by Luis Rodriguez. Just overplaying his man. And I'm telling you when, you, when you've got Keyshawn that just always, no matter make or miss, he picks up his defender or his, his opponent in the backcourt. He's going to guard. Luis is just always active and around. And Jackie's just got speed. You've got guys that are going to be able just to guard. Shane Noel, same Oh, way. and I forgot. Parquet. We've got an all pack 12 yeah. defender on the, on the bench sitting here right now as well. Keyshawn Gilbert drives and lays it in. What a nice move by Keyshawn. 89 69. Rebels up 20. They were just up three a moment ago. Gone on a 17 nothing run in the last three and a half minutes. Under a minute to go now. Kurtz comes left side. Isabel McCullough bounces Whoa. to another player in the game for the first time. That's uh, Baines. He missed the shot over Mawoka. A three the other way for hmm. Luis Rodriguez is no good. 40 seconds to go. Kelly the other way. As I said, Rebels come home tomorrow. Yay. Although this has been a really nice I mean, Vancouver's trip. a lovely it's city. It's awesome. Foul underneath on the Rebels. Definitely going to have to make a return trip here and just it, have more time is. to come see the sights and walk around. Because I've walked, we, I know you have. We've walked around a lot this city. Yeah. And there's great things to walk around and see the sights, and especially down on the seawall. Yeah. Um, yeah. Canada Place and Stanley Park. And just got a chance to, to, as you said, walk around and mm -hmm. bike around a little right, bit. Yeah, rode the bike. And uh, see, it just spent just some time down gorgeous. by the water yesterday. Yep. Granville Island. Granville Island is awesome. Great restaurants and all sorts of galleries. And yeah. uh, got a chance to spend a good amount of time down there sampling some of the local products. Spend, spent a lot of time outside this trip, which yep. is nice. I mean, this is a great time of year up in this in this this part of the world, I guess. I wouldn't say country. It's not our country, but you know what I mean. Eighty nine seventy. One of two free throws made. Rebels have the ball. 
with about uh, 17 seconds to go. Keyshawn Gilbert on the left side. Keyshawn goes baseline. Keyshawn got fouled, lays it off to Mooka. David grabs it, turns, and lays it in. Nice job by David Mooka. 91 to 70 with eight seconds to go. And uh, Kurtz comes under the basket, out to McCullough. McCullough launches a three. That's no good, and that's the way the game ends as the Rebels uh, thoroughly dominate the last four minutes. And uh, they go on a 19-1 to run to finish the game. It's crazy when you focus and they lock in on what they can accomplish. Again, they think they just got, got a little bored. And then no disrespect I, to the Cascades of, of UFV, but it's, it's a matter of just got, kind of got bored, yeah. uh, got complacent with, with what they're trying to accomplish. But a great job by the Rebels to, to finish up this foreign tour.